remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again. And, you know, I do not ordinarily talk a lot on this show about religion. Uh, I am a Christian, and certainly uh, my religious faith and my uh, sense of morality do play a tremendously large role in the shaping of my political beliefs. And uh, certainly politics is what we talk about most of the time on here. But I usually don't get into... Uh, minute discussions of theology. I am a layman. I'm, I'm a layperson. I am not a, a minister. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a priest. I'm none of those things. I do not have the training in, in those areas. I do not have the anointing in those areas. That's not where my talents are. My talents are in the world of politics. That's, uh, that's what I choose to focus on in terms of these programs. So uh, I, I'm, I'm not an evangelist in the religious sense. I guess I'm more of a political evangelist, if you want to call it that. So I usually don't get into uh, deep religious discussions here. However, there's been a thought that's been rolling around my head the last few days that kind of uh, straddles that line between politics and religion. And it's interesting enough, it's something I don't hear a lot of people talk about, that I thought, well, let's, let's bring it forth on here and see what people think about it. And, and see maybe if some of the clergy out there that watch this show, maybe if they have some feedback on it. Because it's something I've been wondering about lately and something I find very interesting. I've been thinking a little bit about the Ten Commandments. Of course, most of you know that those of us who are Christian uh, try to use the Ten Commandments as a, kind of a guidebook for how we live our lives. They're the most important rules out there, basically. And uh, even those who are not religious out there, even the even reasonable people who do not subscribe to the Christian religion, can still look at the Ten Commandments and say... That's a pretty good set of rules. I mean, you know, don't kill people, don't steal, don't lie. I mean, most of the stuff in there really isn't the type of thing that you would get a question on from a reasonable person. Not really anything there to get offended by or, or, or to really question. So the re reasonable people out there can look at the Ten Commandments and say, it's a pretty good set of standards for living, whether they are religious themselves or not. Well, I thought back to my old days of childhood, back in Sunday school, when we were being taught the Ten Commandments. And, of course, even at an age of six or seven or eight years old, a child can still have the Ten Commandments explained to them. And most of those commandments are pretty self-explanatory. You tell the kid, okay, God says you shouldn't lie, you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't bear false witness, which means a lie. A kid's going to catch on to that pretty quick, right? Most of them are pretty self-explanatory. They don't need a lot of explanation. But there's some of them in there that if you're six years old, seven years old, eight years old, you kind of scratch your head about it. You're not real sure what they mean at that age, and you got to ask the Sunday school teacher about it. I mean, to this day, I'm in my late 30s. I still don't really, can't really say I truly understand what a graven image is. Pretty sure I've never worshipped one, but I can't say I can give you a for sure definition of what a graven image is. Likewise, when I was a kid, one of the commandments was a little bit confusing to me. I didn't understand it. It was the commandment that said, thou shalt not covet. There I am, six or seven years old in Sunday school, thinking, covet? That's a funny word. I don't know what that means. So I raised the hand. I asked the teacher, teacher, what does thou shalt not covet mean? And the way my Sunday school teacher explained it to me was that covet essentially means that you want something that someone else has and you don't want them to have it. In other words, if, if you want a sports car, that in and of itself is not coveting. But if your neighbor has a sports car and you say that you want his sports car and you don't want him to have it because you don't think he deserved it, you don't think he worked hard for it or whatever, that is coveting. Okay, that made sense to me. Even a six or seven year old kid could understand covet when it is uh, defined in those terms. Well, fast forward to today, my late 30s, and I noticed something. Uh, you know, I've been voting now for about 20 years, which means I've been in involved in the political process in some way, shape, or form since the early 1990s. Uh, at some points in my life, uh, you know, more involved than others. I'm probably more involved now than I ever have been. But there's at least been some amount of attention paid from me 
to both political parties and the major issues that they were uh, advocating and pursuing at a given time for the last 20 plus years. All right. Well, what I notice is I think back to the Ten Commandments that the left in America and the Democrats during my adult lifetime, going back at least to the early 1990s, have seemed to focus all of their energy, all of their ideology, all of their policy on the idea of taking wealth and resources away from certain groups so that they will no longer have those resources and then giving those resources to other groups whom they favor. They're always threatening to raise taxes. I mean, how, how often do you hear Democrats talk about raising taxes on the wealthy or having the wealthy pay their fair share in taxes, even though the top half of the wage earners pay over 90% of the taxes? I'm not sure where they're getting this fair share thing, but they're always talking about raising taxes on the wealthy, taking wealth from the wealthy so that they no longer have it and then giving it to someone else they like, redistributing it if they will. Uh, hmm, seems kind of odd. I mean, have you ever noticed that you never hear, never hear Democrats talk about raising taxes across the board on everybody? You never hear that today. And I'm not saying I would be in favor of it, but at least it wouldn't be as disingenuous. No, you always hear them talk about raising taxes just on certain people, taking resources away just from certain people that they feel aren't paying their fair share to begin with. What about derisive language on corporate profit? Oh, it's unfair that the oil companies make so much money. We need to give that money somewhere else. So you want to take resources from the oil company or from other corporations so that they no longer have it and give it to whom you wish. We talk about, hear them talk about Obamacare and how we need to get you know, health coverage for certain people, and that means other people may need to pay more for their health coverage. So again, you're wanting some people to pay more and take resources away from them so that you can then provide some kind of health coverage to others that you decide you like, forgetting that you're going to deprive others of health care. We're not even going to go there for today. But yeah, it's take resources from one group and give it to someone else. Hmm, are you seeing a trend here? pushes to raise the minimum wage. Hey, let's make the businesses pay more money for their labor. Let's take money away from the businesses. Take resources away from the businesses because we don't want them to have it and give it to the workers. Or, or even even lately, uh, you know, it pushes to force companies and insurance companies to to purchase birth control for their for their employees, not not asking them if they would like to purchase it. No. Forcing them to purchase it, even if they don't want to, even if they got religious uh, religious convictions not to do so. Oh, no, no. We've got to take those resources away from them and make those resources go to where we as Democrats, we as the government, think they should go. Or even today, there was a lot of talk in Washington about equal pay for equal work. Again, forcing companies, potentially, to pay more for female labor than they would otherwise forcing companies to part with resources so that they no longer have those resources and give them to others whom they feel are so deserving. When you look at all those things and you look at that pattern, I'm sorry. That's some coveting behavior right there. I'm not a preacher, but and I'm not a biblical scholar, but dead gum. The liberals and the Democrats are coveting all over the place. Covet, 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 covet. It's all they seem to do. In fact, once you get beyond the covetous policies, if I can be so bold as to make up a word, if you can get past the covetous policies of the Democratic Party and the American left, what is left of their ideology? Not much. And it's not just recently. I mean, this is like my whole adult life. As I look back on the Democratic Party since the early 1990s, since I have been involved in politics, since I have been voting, Everything they come up with is about taking from someone so that they no longer have it and then trying to give that to someone that they think is more justified. It's not about trying to create wealth so that we all can get more. No, no, no. It's about taking something from someone, taking means from someone so that they can give it to someone who they like better. Now, again... I'm not a uh, minister, pastor, etc., not a theological teacher. 
So I understand I may be a little bit out of my area of expertise, but I, I do have a brain and, and I can read and wow, it, it seems to me that if one takes seriously the following of the Ten Commandments, and one takes seriously the idea that thou shalt not kill, and thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not bear false witness, and there thou shalt not worship a graven image in the unlikely event you actually run into one somewhere, and thou shalt not covet that supporting democratic policies in 2014 or embracing liberalism in 2014 would be a pretty severe violation of that commandment. I'm not sure that's a risk I would want to take. Now granted, maybe some of you out there who are ministers and pastors and so forth can weigh in. Maybe I'm off base here. But my, by my understanding of this, I don't see how you can be a Democrat without a good deal of coveting. The Bible says thou shalt not covet. And today I just wonder if that also means thou shalt not support thy Democrat. Food for thought. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next week.